Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of The Sick Show, and I'm here with my main man, Brent. How are you, buddy? Tropical. Tropical. <laughs> Love the shirt, bro. It's like a pimp and dude. This week, we interview legendary photographer, John Cornforth, and he's got an epic rainbow whale fail story to tell us. Yes, and he's going to inspire us with an amazing tropical aerial image from Kauai, and wait until you guys find out about John's custom-built hexacopter and how he uses it to capture those amazing aerial images. Bro, I want one. Yeah, <laughs> Epic. Let's get into it. The Six Show. Share, inspire, create.com. Share. All right, John, yep. share an interesting story with us. Interesting story. All right, well, let's talk about when I was up in Alaska last August and I was leading a small uh, photo tour with, I had four clients and, 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 you know, don't get me wrong. I'm always happy that like my clients get as good or a better photo than me, but not when it's like the picture I've been chasing for 15 years. <laughs> And I've always joked, and, and people that know me in the like underwater photography community know I'm always joking, but seriously, about wanting to get a breaching whale with a rainbow, and especially if I could get them lined up together. And so here I am, I'm leading four clients in Southeast Alaska, and I'm driving the boat, and they're, they're in front of me in the little skiff, and you know the rainbows will last a long time in Alaska because the light's kind of coming down so like you know for so long. And so we had a lot of time, this whale started breaching, and I said, I'm gonna line this thing up. And so I'm both driving, you know, I'm using my leg to drive, and I got the camera like this, and sure enough, one of these breaches happened, and the whale, the, bre the rainbow's coming down, and the breach was right here in it. And it was just all so quick that, like, my autofocus was off. And fortunately, the other four people, they did get the photo. And I mean, it's beautiful. You know, you can even see the rainbow in all the water exploding off of the whale. Wow. But, you know, I looked real Incredible. quick and I'm like, oh, I missed this picture. So, you know, hats off to like Kim and Evelyn for like nailing that photo. And, uh, you know, gives me something to like chase after for another 15 years. So, you know. I can't believe that. 15 I know. years. 15 years. You so, it. you know. Dude. If I'm lucky the, the next couple of, the next few months I'm out here in Hawaii trying to photograph, you know, it's like if the weather's bad and I can get out there for sunrise and yeah. I'll be looking for it. But so many things have to come together to get a rainbow with the whale to breach right there. And I know. Uh, people probably won't They'll probably think that the rainbow is actually photoshopped. So, yeah, you, that's a good yeah. point. Because, you know, one of my buddies, he's all like, I should just photoshop that. Nobody's even going to believe it if you ever get it. But, yeah. you know, we got it. We got it. And it's like, I think one of the only times I can think of anybody who's got a photo like that. It's so, amazing, man. Uh, yeah. It's awesome, it's isn't wild. it? Yeah. Awesome. It's wild. years to get an image and then you miss it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, but he was there to see it. Yeah, sorry. I was yeah, there to see it. it. And that's like, it. you know, and I've got, I've got the image now on my hard drive that I'm using, like, you know, not, not to, for my own work, but at least I've like, you know, tried to promote it yeah. as yeah. part of like my package for my clients and, yeah. you know, with the, my friends, my client's permission and stuff. Yeah. But oh, that's wicked, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome story, yeah, man. Yeah, good. That's really yeah. good. So, you know, it's just failures happen, you know, yeah, that's and you it. just got to keep trying, but you got, you know, trying to push yourself to do something that nobody else has done. You just got to have that like creative vision to yeah. do it. Yeah. That's, that's pretty hard nowadays because most things have been done. John, so like yep. thinking about a whale mm. breaching with a rainbow in the background, I mean, yeah. that's, that's really, <laughs> like, exactly. that's really, really hard. I know, I know, but you know, it's like, then we got to figure out how to get the unicorn in there too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Photoshop. Yeah. 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 Or maybe, we, it, maybe we need to get the whale, like one breaching on this side of the rainbow and the yeah, other yeah. on this side yeah, of the rainbow. Breach. Yeah. yeah, double breach away from oh, each oh, other. Oh, or maybe, yeah. no, together. They'd have to go like this with, with the, the rainbow, rainbow coming down. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll pay for that. I know, I know. <laughs> Wicked dude. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Inspire. Oh, buddy. Inspire us with one of your epic images. Oh, so we've been talking a lot about my, my drone photography lately. And do you want me to lift that up? Show that thing right now? Oh, let's first talk about the image. The image yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's we'll talk about what you, okay. what you sure. used to create. Well, um, so I've been flying these, building and flying these drones the last uh, year and a half now. And I'm trying to use them to shoot still images but like dramatic, interesting, artistic images, not just like saying I'm flying a drone, not just taking a picture of a highway, a bridge. You know, I'm trying to take these things out into nature to do something like different and interesting. 
And so fortunately I've been bring, bringing them out to Hawaii quite a bit the last year, year and a half. And uh, one of my favorite shots that I've gotten is on Kauai, uh, towards the end of the road at the beginning of the Nepali coast, looking, uh, I, I flew from Ka Beach and looking back onto the beach from about a quarter mile offshore. Wow. And I did this also during the summer months because it's like the lights better and then the, like there weren't, the seas weren't bad. Um, so it's actually pretty calm and you can see the reef. And you know, I was probably 50 meters above the water and about two, 300 meters at least out. And so, you know, taking off, fly out there and then turn around and here you go, you got the beautiful Nepali coast and the beach and, you know, and then of course it wasn't just trying to get that, I was trying to shoot it at like sunset with like a storm front moving in. So I got the dark clouds as they were moving in and then a little while later there was a rainbow, but I didn't want to fly while the water was falling in the rainbow. That's another story, you know? Yeah. But, you know, everything kind of came together. Yeah, cool. So that image is really amazing. So obviously you. you had a polarizer on up there. As I well. did. Looking through, you can see the reef and yep. all, all the detail. Yeah. yeah. So, so like at that time I was flying a different camera, but that one went into the water right after that trip. So <laughs> the whole copter, the whole Ooh. water, everything. So since uh, last May, I've been actually flying this. It's a Sony NEX5. You can mm -hmm. see it's a pretty small mirrorless body, but it's got a really nice sensor on it. Yep. And then um, this Rokinon 12 millimeter lens is super wide on this body. So I get these really wide shots. Mm -hmm. And that makes a difference too about how far out I have to fly. If I'm wider, I don't have to go near as far out over the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, um, you know, being able to compose the image and, you know, while I'm up there flying, you know, we're actually looking at a live view of the camera the video signal out of this down here onto this thing so what i'm actually doing is moving that camera around taking photos and then i throw a switch here to take the actual image okay that's amazing so, the other thing cool. you were saying too there's a storm rolling in so yeah it looks like you didn't have much time to actually get the image shot like you got you know, it up there because the light would have changed on the they side did of the change. as well yeah, yeah so i was out there say like starting at like if sunset was at six i was there at three and i was kind of my ideal time was like four to five to fly mm -hmm. um and so like you know i think i was on my second or third flight so i i flew got my shot kind of figured out where i wanted to fly like two more times mm -hmm. and then like i could see the clouds rolling in and i was you know shooting 10 15 minutes at a time but then it was that third flight where like the clouds actually came into the scene most yeah. you know complementary so yeah that's nice yeah and i suppose not long after you would have lost the light therefore losing, yeah they you know, lost the light into the reef yeah and, yeah you know and you could, you could kind of see as i went out and looked down that way i was like oh it's raining down there i'm not flying in the rain <laughs> yeah. you know so oh, yeah crazy. And I love uh, that wave on the reef. Yeah, isn't that yeah. pretty? Straight line, uh, yeah. Nice yeah. Yeah. Ground. yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we all chase after like the water moving around, whether it's a long exposure or short exposure, mm -hmm. but it's really important in the compositions. You know, I'm shooting one five hundredth of a second. You're shooting every one second. You look at what you've got and you can see the wave wash over a reef. And sometimes there might not be any whitewash. And then other times it's real complementary, you know, aesthetic to the whole composition. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll pick that as the photo that I'm going to like use. Yeah. So amazing, amazing yeah. image, man. Oh, that's yeah. that's for so sharing. inspiring. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank that's you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Really awesome. Create. All right, John, show us what you create with this monster beast in front of us. <laughs> I know, I know, this look at this epic, thing. Epic, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is what I like to also call more of like a budget drone. Um, it's, it's, you know, still way more complicated and, you know, expensive than your standard like DJI Phantom that most people are familiar with. Mm. But, um, you know, something like this is more like a science project. And, you know, it's like I soldered all these things together and all these connections and programmed it and, you know, Two years ago, I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. And it's like, it was a lot of trial and error to get to this point. You can go out and you can buy something like this, like ready to fly from a couple of companies, um, even in North America and whatnot, where they'll build it all for you. And then, you know, it costs a little bit more. Um, but the thing I always am hesitant or warn people about, if you buy something like this big and complicated or more expensive, if one of these comes undone somehow, or this is slightly unscrewed or off. Um, you know, there's so many little things that could go wrong with these drones that like, if you don't know how everything was put together, that could be the difference between you like landing with a photo 
and crashing and losing $5,000. Yeah. You know? Crazy. So, um, you know, it's not something to take lightly. It's not like plug and play. Um, you know, there are some more expensive options out there, but at this point, you know, I'm still comfortable building these things myself, you know, flying this type of camera and, you know, trying to create real, really beautiful imagery with it. Can so, I pick it up? This one, I yeah, feel please. Like this is. Wow. Yeah, so the, so the gimbal here, this is about 500 grams. So that's like a, you know, two pounds. Okay. Um, without the gimbal on here, this thing I think total is about two, two and a half, three. Yeah, it's, this thing is less than three pounds without the gimbal. With the gimbal on there, then we're basically at five pounds. Okay. Right. So then we add like a little over another pound here and then we put a three, four pound battery on it. So we're basically getting up to like four and a half, five kilos, which is like 11, 12 pounds. Wow. They don't, yeah, yeah. It? it's amazing. Yeah, you know, so we it all adds it fly up. earlier and it ripped off the ground. Yeah, like, it's, it's amazing, like you give it throttle, man. you know, so boom. Power. And I love the way, as you're flying it in front of Johnny, when Johnny had some video on his camera, yeah. and the and the copter's going like this, and the gimbal's just And going, you can just see the gimbal stabilize. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. I know, it's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah. So I just noticed you've got a couple of couple of things on, on here that look like you've, <laughs> you've made them, right? Yeah, kind so of. This, does this plug into your camera? Yeah, so this is the, um, the HDMI to audio AV converter. Okay. Because my... Uh, my video system that sends me the data and as well as the live signal is an AV signal. Okay. There are newer systems that are full HDMI, right. but then they're like more complicated and whatnot. Okay. And, or, you know, anyways, this is like a $35 component. And then the like, the soldering I had to do to put it together to like get it to connect to the system. So that's okay. why it's, you know, right. kind of like a do it yourself project, you yeah, know? So so that connects to your camera. Yeah. So the uh, video signal goes through that into your In, transmitter. Which yeah. It, well, it, actually, the video signal goes into the data uh, output from the copter. Okay. So there's a data thing in here that basically reads what's going on between the GPS and like my altitude, the okay. voltage, all those things that I was yep. reading out to you. Yes. That all comes out of this thing, okay. which the video signal is plugged into, and then that comes out of the actual like transmitter over here. Okay. So there's the box, there's the transmitter. Okay. So then when I'm actually looking at the image on my display, yep. it's like there's the image, but then overlaid around it is all oh, the data see, that I'm oh, looking and at. And the displays on the control there, is it John? Can you show yep. us that there? Yeah, Because yeah. 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 you were telling us yeah, you could see how high you were, how far Exactly, away. so obviously it's not on right now or anything, but like normally I'll look at the whole screen and it'll basically be you know, if I get the back of this thing, you know, it'll you basically be the back of here. Yep. Actually, pop that top off and that'll help a little bit maybe, right? So while I'm flying, I'll have this kind of a view going on, right? And then you can see it'll even have like some of these like OK and menu. That's part of the video feed. Yeah. And then there's my exposure down on the bottom or my, my settings. And so that'll be overlaid on this screen. And then around the outside of it, like in the top corner there will be like, that data of like the height, the altitude, the yep. distance out, what mode I'm in, the voltage, you know, a few data points that are yeah. important to me as I'm flying, yeah, very you know, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm monitoring it and like, it'll show me like, okay, my total flight time is at eight and a half minutes. I'm at 14.8 volts, which means to me that I can go to 14.4, which is about another four minutes flight. Okay. So I, I'm at eight and a half minutes and I know I'm going to get another four. So I know I got, you know, 12 minutes maybe overall. So, you know, it's all this monitoring the data and the calculations in my head to stay airborne and, nice. and safely land. So and what I really love about this as a photographer is yep. you can shoot raw yep. and you can put a polarizing filter in front of that lens. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know. Do people put a polarizer on a GoPro at all? Are they I doing that? That's a good question. But, yeah. I'm not sure. Either. But then it's, yeah, it gets yeah. bizarre, though, you know, because yeah, you're so wide. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. And you do need to be careful. You know what it's like when you're shooting from the ground. The polarizer, you get yeah. that wrong angle. Exactly. Like the blue yeah. blobs. Yep. And, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What, sure. um, what, what the lens? Uh huh. What what size lens is it? And what do you shoot at? What are the settings that you actually shoot at when you are up in the air? <laughs> so so with whether I'm on the drone or I'm flying an aircraft, like I always think like between 100 to 250th 
in, in one five hundredth of a second. Okay. So one two fiftieth to one five hundredth, that stops motion pretty yeah. good, right? Yeah. And so like I'm always trying to shoot like in that range, yeah. and then you know the slower the the more um, the lower ISO number. So yes. it's if it's really bright and I can shoot ISO. 100, yeah. I will. ISO 200, 400, doesn't really matter. Yeah. Beyond 400, certainly with this camera, I'm not happy with. So then, you, you know, the other thing you end up with then is the aperture and somewhere between F4 and F8. Okay. So those are kind of the numbers that I yeah. tend to shoot on this thing. And so. what um, focal length is that lens? So, so this, this is what they consider an APS-C sensor, but it's actually unlike, like Canon's APS-C is 1.6 crop. Yeah. This thing's 1.5, so it's actually a little bit bigger sensor than the like a Canon okay, APS-C. Yeah, the Nikon's a 1.5 too. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, you know, so putting a 12 millimeter on that, okay. 1.5, you get to 18 millimeters. Okay. So yeah. it's pretty dang wide. Pretty wide, yeah. 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 Really wide. Yeah, okay. And um, you know, I mean that that super wide makes a difference when you're already going a quarter mile out and you're trying to frame up a shot. 12 millimeters might be this. In order to get that same thing at 16 or 20 millimeters, you've got to go even further out yeah, to get it, true. right? Yeah. And so then that's more flight time and mm, yeah. you know, further away from it's you. further yeah. away. Yeah. So, you mm -hmm. know, that's kind of why I'm doing this, but I am thinking about, I was telling you, going back to the, the Sony 16, yeah. just cause it's smaller, save some weight again. So, okay. yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's oh. awesome, man. That's such an amazing bit of kit and some yep. awesome images. But it's just it, it's that just, video flying over oh, the water. The video. And <laughs> that's how like, stable the video. We'll show a bit of that video yeah. now, guys. But I'll tell you what, it's just so stable. Yeah. It looks like something that's been shot out of a helicopter. It looks amazing. Yes. It just. You know, but you wouldn't fly straight. a helicopter five meters above the well, waves. No, you wouldn't. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's I wouldn't. True. I wouldn't have been that close to a helicopter anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, uh, epic footage. But and, like yeah, flying yeah. over the waves like that yeah, right into great, it. That was great, oh, wasn't it? Fly over was awesome. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I'm, I think I want one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's so, awesome. So, so John, when people want to find out more about you, where do they go, and how how can they? you know, find out more about what you do and all that. Sure. So, you know, I, my website's been online for almost 15 years. So wow. that's a long time, you know, in the photography internet world. Um, so I'm at cornforthimages.com. And, uh, you know, I used to be a lot more active in social media and blogging, and I'm a little bit more private these days, but, you know, I'm still on Facebook and, uh, you awesome. know, Google+, Plus, Twitter, yep. all those things. But, okay. you know, at the end of the day, I just like being out here with, like, good people. So, awesome, yeah. awesome. So two more yeah. questions, John. Please. What's this beach called that we're at now? This is uh, Maca Lavena. Don't ask me how to spell that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's, in, it's part of Kakaha Kai State Park. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. Okay. Kakaha, 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 Kakaha Kai Kakaha State Kai. Park. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, it's actually like the whole coastline north of here. <laughs> right. Here north of the airport and everything. And the, so. and the second question I had for you, and I, I, I've noticed you, we spent a couple of days with you now. Yeah. At, you know, lunches and dinners and yeah. a few beers and whatever. And you've spoken a lot about being skunked. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what that meant. No. Oh, yeah, outside. that's a... Yeah. So tell us what it, what it means to be skunked. Skunked. Oh, we should look that up on the internet, see where that came from, too. Maybe it's a Midwestern term, because uh, I grew up in Michigan in the Midwest, so... But um, skunked is just basically like, you know, failing at something, so... So you know, failing miserably shoot. too, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. So what about in photography terms? I mean, you well, use it all the time. You see this beautiful blue sky behind us right now? Like, that's not really what I'm gonna try to shoot at sunset anywhere, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's great to be out there with the whales, underwater photography, flying the drone, but you know, blue sky like this, it's better to be at the beach than worrying about shooting the most epic sunset you've yeah, ever yeah, seen, you sure. know? Yeah. Where I've shot sunsets along this coastline out here, it's like, rainy days where you know you didn't even leave the house or the condo yeah. but you like watched it and you know i mean that's like anywhere in the world like it's raining and then you're like is that sun poking through on the horizon and, yeah, and all of a sudden off. the whole sky oh. lights up and yeah. that's not what we've got with the day like this so, <laughs> sure. so yeah. if you went to shoot a sunset tonight you'd get skunked i'd get skunked no tonight yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know technically too i don't know if you if you don't even try 
If you give up and don't even try to go shoot the you're sunset, skunked. you can't get skunked. Oh. Getting skunked, you actually have to go down you and try. Effort right. into it. Yeah, yeah and effort so, into it. Okay, so, like, okay. if you even drive up to the beach <laughs> yeah, yeah. and look at the sunset, yeah. then you got skunked. Okay. But <laughs> if you just go watch, like, you know, the football game this afternoon and you have a couple of beers in you and you're like, I'm not even going to look at the sky, you didn't get skunked. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's epic, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's John, good. thank you so much for being on the show. I'm yeah. sure. Um, you know everyone's interested in the, yeah. the drones and it's uh, you know it's it's up in the top of the news nowadays exactly yeah. sometimes not always good news yeah. yeah it is amazing but uh, john's an awesome uh, wildlife and underwater photographer we're well, gonna have you. you back to talk about that stuff i too. appreciate yeah. that i do appreciate awesome that work. i'd love to, yeah. love to yeah. share with you guys so. well hey That's let me awesome, just say man. let me just say with the drones you know everybody like you know operate these things safely yes you know pay attention to the guidelines in your country wherever you're living at yeah. don't fly them near people don't tick people off. Don't fly them near an airplane. Don't fly them over a road. Like, you know, let's use some common sense yeah, with them, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. Go take them, get out there someplace where like nobody else is around. And that's what you should be striving for anyways, yeah, right? That's, so, that's where the good images are gonna come yeah. from, mate, eh? Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. it. And for the better of the, the photography too, the drone uh, photography, man. You wanna be able to keep doing it without, yeah. without major limitations. So. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. no, good advice, man. Yeah. yeah. Epic. Well, thanks, John. Awesome, John. All right, Cheers, thanks, man. guys. Thanks for being on. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Right. Man, what an amazing guy John is. I just oh, love that hexacopter man. and how he gets those images and it's just... Epic. Ah, love man, it. He, some of his work is amazing, guys. You have to check out his website. At, um, yeah, it's just it's just incredible. Like, underwater photography, landscape photography, now his aerial work with ah. his hexacopter. Just amazing. And wildlife, his wildlife photography, it's just incredible. Yeah. Yeah, he's such an inspiring guy. Actually. You know what I love about John is he sets these really difficult goals for himself because he's done everything i mean yes, he's, he's he tried has. it all he's been everywhere in the yep. world basically and he sets his goals for himself like i mean he was telling me off camera that he wants to go to vanuatu and photograph the lava spitting out of a volcano with his hexacopter that's crazy, i'm like i'm going with you yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, who does yeah. that that's epic and and the fact that you know he was still really happy that his client got the shot of that whale yeah. you know even though he'd been waiting 15 years to get it it's just yeah it's just amazing and i think you know i think that's that's a really good tip he's got is setting goals for yourself in your photography it doesn't have to be something extreme like going to photograph a volcano it can be you know what i'm gonna go and get a macro shot of my favorite whatever a lizard or flower yeah. today and just setting those goals and working towards it it just pushes you forward doesn't it well it keeps you inspired yeah, totally you know right. so some of us uh, professional photographers might get a little flat because you're you shooting do. the same yeah. stuff all the time and you're shooting for clients and basically you you're working you fit you're doing a photography for yeah. money so I think you've got to set a personal goal to keep yourself inspired. Definitely. And yeah. whether that's trying a new form of photography or photographing something different or, yeah, just chat. Or even, you know what I love doing is just even challenging yourself with a new post-processing technique. Any of those things are awesome. You know, mm -hmm. you know, doing those things just to push yourself forward is epic, yeah. man. And but anyway. I yeah. find inspiration from other people's work. Because awesome. I'll, I'll yeah. be on 500 pixels looking at people's work every day mm -hmm. to look for inspiration of what I'm going to do next. Yeah. What's, what is my next personal project, which I don't actually know right now. <laughs> it's the sick show yeah, no. yeah anyway yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah whatever it is to keep you inspired yeah set those goals and work towards it yeah. epic and yeah. uh yeah write them down somewhere because that really helps too looking at them regularly definitely so. guys so awesome yeah click on the link below and check out john's work on his website yeah he's amazing yeah he's an amazing guy and uh i just i, I just really love his attitude towards photography too it's just he's just so passionate about going out you know, he might spend months just to get that one shot. It's just yeah. awesome. I love that. Well, I mean, how yeah. long did he take to set up that hexacopter? I mean, I probably know. about a, a good hour. Yeah. You know, calibrating everything mm -hmm. before he even flew it up uh, on the and big he, island. He may, he may have even got only one keeper out of yes. that, you know, that set of yeah. brief images he took. But, you um, know what the keeper is? It's the one where he flew it towards us and he did the video. Oh, yeah. Epic. Yeah, oh, we'll have to, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't anyway, wait to see that. I can't wait to see it either. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, it's been another epic show. We hope you enjoyed uh, the interview with John. And as always, if you love what we do, please leave us some comments either on the blog um, or on YouTube even. We, we monitor those ones as well. But um, the real important thing you can do, guys, is leave us a rating. And and if you're feeling inspired, a comment on iTunes. That really helps the ratings yeah. for the show. And we, we truly appreciate it. Yeah, and, and leave a couple of comments below this on this blog, on the shareinspirecreate.com blog site, and uh, we'll, we always um, reply to those comments. Yep. Epic, man. Awesome. awesome. All right, guys, have a great day, and uh, we hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next time. See you next week. Peace. Bye.